This here's Greg Van Sand. The biggest deal when you're baptizing nine people is who's going to go first? We're back here literally having a fight. Greg beat everyone up, so he wanted to go first. That's why we're going to get some of these up here. But I want to share Greg's story. Greg is married to Alec Van Sand, our violinist here in the band, and very involved in youth group in our church. A year and a half ago, Alec got saved at our church through our women's ministry, through what Karen does and the Wednesday night ladies' classes. And Allie started bringing her uh, children, her th the three children, to church. And just over the course of time, I remember Allie telling me just a year ago, a few months ago, said, Daniel, please pray for Greg. Greg is not saved. He's never given his life to the Lord. So as a church, we were praying for Greg. And about a month ago, or maybe about gosh, four weeks ago, Greg was with Wayne Rogers. And Wayne shared the gospel with Greg. And Greg got saved. Then uh, shortly after that, he came forward and made his decision public, and he wanted to certainly receive believers' baptism this morning. That's very, it just shows you the, the, the life of what happens when uh, a, a, a mother, a wife gets saved, she starts getting involved in church, the children with Ashley the same way, their oldest daughter, and then a year and a half later, Greg, here we stand in the baptism waters. And Greg also wanted me to share one of the real reasons he gave his life to Christ is because realized when he confronted him with the gospel and he was going to hell. I mean, he was not a believer. If he died, he would be separated from eternity from his family. So Greg comes this morning receiving believer's baptism. Greg, is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Yes, sir, yes. Greg, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This year is Denver Atwood. Denver's best friends with Greg. Denver also came to church because Allie invited him. He's now our guitar player in the band. Allie got involved in the band, and back in November, I showed up at 8.30, and there's a bald guy just like me, Sam, with the stage playing the guitar. And where did he come from? Who is that? And it's Denver, and Denver joined our band and has not missed church since then, actually. And I've missed a single worship service at our church since November. And Denver came to church because Allie invited him, and um, he heard the gospel over and over again. And uh, about, gosh, a month or so ago, a few weeks ago, uh, he was at a event at Sunrise Baptist Church. He said he went there to actually hear their band, how their band played. They shared the gospel there, and he gave his life to Christ there at a big youth rally. So that's very exciting for what, um, for what happened with Denver. But Denver wants to share some words, and then later on in the service, Denver's going to be playing a song. Denver? Um, well, first, I guess I'd like to say thanks for everybody who's coming to. I know we really appreciate the opportunity to hold me in the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing is, uh, when talking to Pastor Daniel about uh, the baptism process and the symbolism of the and stuff like that, it occurred to me that, to be honest with you, I was kind of living my life prior to coming to the church as though I was like trying to win the lottery, but I never bought a ticket. Um, kind of like uh, basically expecting God to do something spectacular in my life, but not ever asking, not ever learning how to, how to I guess, promote that process. Um, and I've learned a lot since, uh, since I've been here. And I'm really excited about uh, getting to I guess, show you guys that I am making a huge change in my life. And I encourage you guys to follow me. Thank you, Denver. Yeah. 
low. I got to know Ben. Ben started coming to our church about two and a half months ago here at the 11 o'clock worship service. Him and his wife Joyce. And um, I got to know them through Upward. Uh, ben came work in my air conditioner, my house. And I, uh, I just got to know him just through every Sunday. Them being here and getting more and more involved in our church. And a couple of weeks ago, Joyce came forward. And she wanted to transfer her membership and join our church. They recently moved to the St. Charles neighborhood and down here in Granville. And I was talking with uh, Ben and sh sharing with him. And he had, he had been saved at a younger age, but he had never received believer's baptism. So he said, Daniel, this is something I need to do. And I need to do it as soon as possible. Ben also wanted to share some words. Ben? I'm a, not a man of very many words. I'm just going to say it. Down with the old man. Amen. That's yeah.
this. Here's Chelsea Powell. Chelsea is one of the most involved, if not the most involved teenager here in our youth group. Chelsea got saved during our revival back in October with John Reed. She came forward and says, Daniel, I have been baptized a few years ago here at our church, but I was just doing it because some of my other friends were doing it. It meant nothing to me. I had not been converted. Nothing in my life changed. And I was not a believer when I first got baptized. So um, I actually, when people come in like that, I try to talk them out of it. I try to really help hard, but Chelsea said, no, Daniel, I got saved on October 19, 2011. I need to receive believer's baptism. And she was insistent on doing this again. I, re I realized that she's this insistent, that means she means it. So Chelsea's coming this morning to receive believer's baptism. She gave her life to Christ at John Reed's revival we had on October 19th, and here she is this morning following in baptism. How exciting. She's an eighth grader at Smoky Road Middle School. Chelsea, is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Yes. Wonderful. Chelsea, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This year's 
Josh Bishop, and in second, his wife Jamie is going to be getting baptized. Uh, Josh is, lives right here, uh, literally across the street from the church, and his wife Jamie. They started coming to church to different ministries here, and about a month ago, one um, after one of the services, I believe it was the Easter service, Josh pulled me aside back in the room and says, Dino, I need to talk with you. And you know, we had a chance to talk about what it meant to be saved. I told him to read out John chapter 3, which every day he told me that week he went and read about what it meant to give his life to Christ and follow a believer's baptism. And then I believe the next Sunday or so, he came forward and made his decision public and said, I need to get baptized. So Josh recently gave his life to Christ, and now he's coming this morning following in baptism. And just after this, his wife Jamie's going to get baptized too. This is an example of what happens when our church goes out in the community and does ministry to people. Here we see, it might not happen the next week, a few months, a few years later, we find ourselves in the baptism pool with new believers following in Christ. And Josh is coming, very exciting, his new salvation. Josh is Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life. Wonderful. Josh, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 